Ah, man, it's been a great day so far. Hope y'all been having fun. Um, I'm Nick. I, if you're new here, um, my name's Nick, and uh, I get to I get to share with you guys today. I'm really excited, really stoked, and welcome for coming. Um, so if you are a guest, welcome. We have stuff for you in the back um, if you want it. And if you've got any questions about anything um, except how babies are made, I asked that question. And nobody answered. Um, still waiting. Um, go in the back or ask any of the, any of the, any of the people you see kind of hanging out looking like they're trying to be helpful. Go ask. They'll, they're happy to answer any of your questions, send you, direct you anywhere. Um, hopefully not out the door. And, uh, and yeah, so welcome. A uh, few of our announcements, upcoming events. Good News Club. I, uh, I found out about this one. This is really, really cool. They are actually letting us, letting, letting a Christian organization go into schools and, uh, and teach about Jesus. So this is, this, I mean, you don't really hear about this because usually they're trying to push us out. So it's, uh, it's really cool. They need volunteers, though. So here, here it is. The schools have said, yeah, come on in. So are we going to go? Um, so if you guys want to find out anything about it um, and potentially volunteer, go find out in the back. Uh, it's, that could be a lot of fun. Um, I've gotten to go into the schools a few times, and it's very, it's very neat. Um, sometimes it's disheartening, but you also see why, why we should be there. Uh, adopt a student. They are buying backpacks, um, binders, school supplies. Um, that's what the, the thing that says adopt a student real big back there. Um, that's to get more information, find out what you can sign up for, when they need it by, things like that. Um, that way kids who maybe parents have trouble getting some of that stuff before school, they don't have to stress and sweat over it. Because sometimes the supplies list is pretty long. And I know that was frustrating for us too growing up. So that way we can provide that for those families. And then missions info meetings. So this isn't you don't have to say, okay, I'm definitely going. This is uh, informational um, resources. Find out what they're doing. And, and also, if you're like, oh, yeah, I definitely want to go there. I'm all really involved. or uh, It's for you also. So July 29th and August 10th, there is more information about that. And once again, you're that app, the bulletin on the app and the bulletin you have with you has all of this stuff for when I butcher it. Um, cool. So let's pray before we get started. Hey God, you are just so amazing that even even in the even with the resistance we face that you are still here, you are still shining, you are still working, you are still being you. Thank you so much, God. And uh, as we have this opportunity today, may may the most of it come. May may I stay out of the way and may my words be be guided and led by you and may may the ears be opened by you. Um because you do it all. Thank you so so much, God. Amen. All right, so why pray before we do that? For, for me, I mean, personally, it, I know it's, it's kind of something we do all the time, but, but why, why pray? For me, I, it, I absolutely have to. Um, because it, it makes a difference. If prayer didn't make a difference, we wouldn't do it. Um, and for some of us, sometimes prayer just becomes a, um, maybe something we do for fun or tradition or makes us feel good. I'm not sure. But, um, but prayer is absolutely vital, and it changes things, and it changes us. So, so let's take a step back and kind of talk about myself a little bit. Um, Kelsey and I, Kelsey was talking to her um, mom the other day, and her mom, it was, she was just kind of telling her about just normal stuff going on. And, and we haven't lived there for, for a while, and, um, and our lives are very different than they used to be. And her mom said, man, it's like you guys are like missionaries or something, or, um, or what was the other word, or, or not, not fanatics or something, but extreme. And my first thought was, oh, okay, well, yeah, I guess, and that was weird. And then I thought, well, you know, I, I'm glad, I, I like that. I, I am, um, I am considered extreme by this world's standards, I think, absolutely. And I, and I love it, and I am a bit of a fanatic for God. There's no question. It would be creepy if I was that way for, for anybody else. Um, and so I wasn't always that way, but then I encountered God. I encountered the real God. I learned and realized some cool things about him. For one, he loves us as we are, not as we should be. So not as we should act at church, not as, as we should be. It's, he loves us as we are. He says, come to me. Not, he doesn't say, fix yourself and come to me. He says, come to me as you are. Give yourself to me. So that was neat. Um, my mom's not even like that. She always made me take a shower before I came in. I had to hose off before coming to the house 50% of the time. Um, and, and he's powerful. So this guy who says, come to me as you are, is powerful. I mean real powerful. I mean car lifting, wall smashing, life changing, miracle working, powerful. And he genuinely cares. So not only does he have that power, but he genuinely cares and loves us. He genuinely cares and loves me. Like I am genuinely cared for and loved for. So that God who 
will wall smash, car lift, whatever. He will do it because he loves me and he'll do it in my life. He made major, major moves in my life. And I mean powerful that I could not ignore. I couldn't ignore this God that was so real. I couldn't ignore him. So now I, ha I have this certainty that God exists. And some of you guys want just a hint of that cer certainty to be able to say, yes, I know God exists and I can stand on that. I feel you. I've been there. Um, and you can have it. You can absolutely have it. But we have to look. So it's a certainty that doesn't come from being in church or doesn't come from reading the Bible or a certainty that comes from acting right. Those things are good ways to look. Don't get me wrong. Those are great ways to look. But that's not where that certainty comes from. That's not the way, you, that, that's not where the certainty comes from. It is you looking. It is a certainty that comes from asking and looking. God will make the moves. He'll make the changes when we pray in earnest prayer. That prayer is going to change things. It changes things in us that we could not imagine. And then that'll, that'll then kick out into the world around us. But it first changes us. That is the major thing prayer changes. And we're really going to talk about that a lot. Um, so now back to myself for a moment. I had an amazing earthly father. He was just so cool. I, I loved him. I adored him. I admired him. And, and I feared him. I was scared of him. I, there were times when I was very scared of him. I, he, had, he got this look on his face, and he would, sometimes he would stomp if he really wanted you to know that he wasn't happy. And, uh, and I wouldn't run because I was too scared to run. But anyway, um, and I, I wanted to be with him. I wanted to be like him. I learned to work on cars because he was always working on our cars. And so I was like, oh, my dad's right there stationary. He's not usually stagnant. I'm going to go hang out with him. Um, and so out in the hot sun or the cold wind, whatever it was, and, and I'd be sitting there. I wouldn't do much. I'd hold the light for him or I'd, or I'd uh, I mean, sometimes he'd let me turn a wrench. Sometimes he'd let me, just whatever it was. I would do it. And I'd be happy to do it. I was happy to hang out with him. And sometimes he would drop something like in a spot he couldn't reach. And so all of a sudden I was, I was vital. So yeah, I was useful for a few moments. It's kind of like what God does for us. He lets us. And so, um, but most of the time I only felt accepted and wanted simply because I was loved and he included me in what he was doing. And he would answer some of my annoying questions. And we would do a lot of stuff together. He'd come to a lot of my sports games. I played like semi-competitive ball when I was younger and football and wrestling. And, and he would come and, and be there or he, we would go anywhere and, and then after the fact, we would talk usually about our day. So yeah, we were there the whole time together. He knew what happened in the game. He knew what happened here. He knew what happened there. But we would still talk about it. And it was a lot, some of it was I wanted to hear what he thought about it. I wanted to hear you know, what his take was on what happened. And, and I, I, wanted, I wanted to hear what he thought about what I thought, too. Like, Dad, I really didn't like this when this guy did this. Or that was really funny when that happened, right? Was that funny? Um, and kind of. You kind of get it. And so... And then I would start putting some of that into practice in my life. Like I would learn more and more about him. I desired to learn more about him. And then I would put that into practice in my life and, and start running. And, and that, that became, you know, I was modeling my life after him. And then, guys, this is, this is, this is great. The, the greatest thing ever happened to me. He died when I was 17. And now that, that keystone that I had, that cornerstone that I had was gone totally gone. I could no longer ask him what he thought about this or that. And when you're 17, there's a lot going on. And instead, I was doing other things. But so that was totally gone. But you know what I learned to do? You know what I found out in that happening? Was that I had an earthly father who loved me more than he did, who I could then do the same thing with. And that changed me because I started talking to him. I prayed and I listened and that changed me. So prayer changes things. Yeah, and it changes us, which is so cool. And that's what we're going to talk about today. That was just the intro, so I hope you guys are ready. Um, and I got to pick up the pace. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so we're, we're going to summarize prayer a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit on a lot of the things a lot of you guys have heard. So those of you following the series, some of this is, is refresher, um, but refreshers are really great too. So what is prayer? Prayer is communication with God. You know, I always ask, doesn't God always hear us, know everything about us? Yeah, but we don't always hear God, and we don't always know everything about Him. And and prayer clearly has really great power when it comes from a humble, righteous person. Um, we see that here from the Bible. Um, not on the screen, but in the Bible. There's a Bible verse that's going to come up any second now. Um, in James 5.16. I forgot my cue. I was supposed to tell him it's in James, but I couldn't remember where it was. Um, so, so the first part, confess your sins, repent, 
Pray for each other so you may be healed. So that, that's powerful in itself. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful revert, results. Uh, earnest. So intense, serious state of mind. We don't just toss our prayers up there. Oh yeah, God, it'd be nice if I had a new pair of shoes. Earnest. We go to him serious. What is my real concern? What do I really want? I'm here seriously talking to you about this. Righteous, acting in accord with divine or moral law. So not, we get that term self-righteous and people, people turn it into something ugly. But morally right or justifiable, acting in accord with divine or moral law, acting in accord with God. So, so we get our, we, that, that is a powerful, powerful prayer. So prayer is powerful. And something we have to understand, if we want to be uh, somebody acting in accord with God, we need Christ because we are sinful. We are ugly. Um, you, guys, you guys have heard me say it a million times maybe. We are ugly people. We sin and we spread hate and we do awful things every day. But that's why Christ... He made a path for us to God so that we can be a righteous person. We have to humble ourselves and repent. And he makes us so that we can have that powerful prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So here he is claiming it. He wanted to make it sure it was clear who he was, what he was here for. And here's one of the places he does it. If you really knew me, you would know my father. Really cool. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I, I could go on forever. I love that one. So, so why pray? So we can be in communion with the father. Um, and communion, the sharing of intimate thoughts and feelings. That, that, that's, what, that's what I mean by that. And so, so why does God use us? Why doesn't he just act and why doesn't he just do things? Um, anybody? I mean, he's, he's in control over everything. Why don't we just sit back and let him go? When we do that, we're asking God to do everything and us just to sit on the back, on the sidelines and not be a part of it. But we're missing something about the creation here. In Genesis, when he talks about how he created us, this is really, really cool. Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild land. They'll reign. So we are meant, we are not only in his image, but we're meant to reign with him, to reign under him. Now, if we're not praying to him, if we're not talking to him, if we're not communicating with him, how do we reign under him the way he wants us to reign? And so, so we're missing a big part of it. And some of that is love. He wants us looking to him. He wants us to be in communion with him. He wants us to do this with him. So he wants us in the game, which is really, really cool. So why require us to ask? Why not just do it? Because he wants us to know him and see him work. So let's put ourselves in a place to do that. And this can be really, really tough because we established that a humble, righteous prayer is a powerful one. So if we really want results, we evaluate ourselves before approaching God. Are we humble? Are we righteous? These go deep, so you've got to dig deep to find out. Like, yeah, right now I seem fine. I'm clean. I took a shower. We've got to dig deep. So the first prayer, the first and most important prayer we should ever pray is this one. And man, is it powerful. So you guys are familiar with what Jesus did. He, he came and he lived for us. He lived for 30 years. Jesus, God, God became human, lived for 30 years on this earth, 30-ish, um, and then, and then showed us God, really showed us God because he w was God. And then he laid his life down. He, he quietly let them take him and, and torture him, brutally torture him. It was, it was crazy. Flesh hanging off his back, um, painful hours and hours. Um, and he did that for a reason. He did that for us so that we could, so we could be with him. And so before he did that, um, of course, he, had, he spent years with these, these disciples, these 12 people. And before he did that one night, when they were sitting down to dinner, he, um, oh, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so that, once again, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He did those things so we could be with him. So we're not righteous. We've separated ourselves from him. We are ugly. Jesus knew we would do that. He knew that would be the case. And so, as you would expect, he had a plan. He had it covered. And that's why he did those things he did. And so, right before he did it, he wanted, he wanted to explain. Right before he died on the cross, he wanted to explain what was going on, why. And so that's why he said what is written here in Luke 22. He took some bread and he broke it in pieces, and he gave it to the disciples. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance for me. My body is for you. Jesus said that, made it very, very clear. And then he took a cup of wine and said, this is like my blood. Or this is like my blood. That's right. And this is the new covenant, the new promise 
of my payment for your sins, the new promise that you can be with me because of what I am doing and what I've done. Because I will lay my, my life down, my body and my blood will be laid down for you. So the most powerful prayer we can say comes down to that right there and saying, God, we want you. We want to be one with you. We want to be cleansed by you. We see the need. We know that we need it because we see the ugly. And thank you for what you've done. We want that in our lives. And so, so we celebrate this all the time. We take communion and when we eat that bread. We say, thank you for your body that is for my sins that I can be righteous. Now, it's not a prideful thing because we know we aren't, but we know he wants us to be. So we take that and we say, thank you. Not because we want to be righteous, but because we want to be with God. And he says, I, here's the way. And we say, thank you for the way. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your blood. We acknowledge who you are and what you've done. And now I'm ready to lay my life down, my life down as you've laid your life down. That's the prayer of communion. What a powerful prayer. Because just what that does in our hearts, in our minds, when we really say, that's it, our life means nothing to us. But what you've done in your life and what you want means everything. That's the prayer of communion. So, and it's all about the heart, not the words. But this is, this is an example prayer, something that, that, I, would, that I would say um, before I took communion. And we're going to take communion here in just a moment. Um, this is something I would say, wow, Jesus, thank you so, so much. I do not deserve it. I'm so sorry you had to die on the cross. But thank you so much for doing it. It shows who you are and what you are. And that's just so amazing. But I just, I don't deserve it. And I thank you so, so much. My life means nothing to me. I want you. I want what you want. And that is it. Bottom line, end of story. And so, so we're going to jump into communion here in just a second. And while you guys are doing it, it's, we're going to have two songs play. So you have plenty of time. And if there's people still up, well, you don't rush. Take your time. Have some quiet time. Have some alone time. You and God, say in that first earnest prayer that matters. I know some of you guys have said it before, but how awesome is it to do it all the time? I mean, I, it's great. I get to do it twice this weekend. That was cool. Um, you can say the prayer anytime you want, but the communion part is neat. Um, and, and there's going to be a couple songs playing in the background. And the words to the second one are neat. Um, God, he, I don't know why he wants this, but he does. And it is just so unbelievably, just, it's just amazing. I absolutely love it. So, so we're going to start communion here in about 30 seconds. Enjoy it. Take your time and, and look at your heart. And if you're ready to give your heart to him, do it then. And if you've done it before, do it again. Remind yourself. Say that prayer with me. All right. Well, thank you. That's awesome, guys. That, 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 that's, that's it. That is the most important prayer you will ever say and you will ever make and how unbelievably amazing that is. So we just, we laid down our lives for him. He says, I want you. And now we've laid down our lives for him. Everything we have is, doesn't mean anything. We want what, what you want for us. We want what you have. We want your love and we want to share that. So, so we're going to go into what that looks like here in just a moment. But now if we want that stuff, we want to go with it. It's a two-way street. It's not a prayer and, okay, I'm going to go about my day. I'm, I'm done now. It's, we got to listen. So God knows our thoughts, so we should get to know his thoughts. His thoughts about our lives, his thoughts about what's going on with us. So this is cool. I saw this quote. There is nothing easier than getting into the right relationship with God. There's nothing easier than getting into the right relationship with God. Unless you're not interested in God, but what God can do for you. So... Hopefully that hurt some of you guys. It, it got me good a long time ago. Um, and so we, we say, what do you want? And then we listen. We have to listen. Psalms and about, oh, they're on top of it. This is great. Listen to my voice in the morning. Each morning I'll bring my request to you and then wait expectantly. So do we expect it to happen? Do, we, do you say your prayer, okay, God, fix this, and then go on? Or do we say our prayer and expect it to happen? Wait for the answer. Wait for him to either guide us into how he wants us to be different or maybe guide us in, um, in who he is and what his nature is and, and him trying to show himself to us because maybe we're looking for some of that un that's uncertainty. We're trying to get that certainty. And then I will climb my watchtower, stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Because this was, this was funny, in Habakkuk, I know it, it is in the Bible, I promise. 
um, he, he's, he's complaining to God about something that's going on. He's like, this is not, not in a, God, what in the world? You're an awful God. It's like, God, this is going on. This is tough. What in the world? I don't understand. Not, you're wrong. I don't understand. And, and help me, show me. And then he goes to listen. He goes because he wants to hear. So when we pray about something, we should expect a response. And we should, and we should look for that response daily. Because we can't all spend all day up in a watchtower. I wish I could. Um, but we can't. We don't. But God can still come with us. So through our moments, through every day, we often go and go about our, our business and then, then we forget about it. And that's why we pray, never stop praying. So you don't have to stop praying. I used to pray when I was, you know, I used to think, oh, you, or say things like, you can't pray while you're skydiving. I used to be a skydiving instructor. You can't pray while you're skydiving. When I had a parachute wrapped around my leg that wouldn't open up and I was coming towards the earth really fast, um, yeah, that was, that's the time. Um, <laughs> and so, but it's some, but we have parachutes wrapped around our legs dragging us down like that sin that gets the hold of us everywhere. So if we are constantly praying, constantly looking for his input, and I mean his input, not our input, then maybe we're not going to get the parachute wrapped around his leg. So seriously, let's, let's talk about what this looks like. Sometimes we're struggling and we have no idea why. Sometimes I'm struggling and I have no idea why. I wonder, where's the joy in life? What's keeping me from the peace that God promises. Um, why are things so hard? How come there's so much tension between my wife, my boss, my coworkers, my friend and I? Well, not all at once, but um, one or the other. All at once, it's clearly my fault. And so I often try to answer that question, though, by pointing to something they're doing that's causing it. Like, all right, th- th- really, come on. See what's going on over here? This is, this is why. But then I take a look at, at this verse here in Galatians. And keep in mind that as you look at this, other people, they don't affect my decisions to sin or not sin or let sin into my life. And, and so when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, not when other people are doing it, but your sinful nature, the results are clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures. I mean, think about these guys... Think about these guys in your life. Um, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, lashing out in anger at someone, selfish ambition, driving for what you want, dissension. Are you, are you, is there tension between you and someone? Division, are you guys separated, me and them? Envy, you want what they have. Drunkenness, you just want to you, you um, let go of all of your, all of your uh, facilities. Wild parties and other things like this. Are you going for, for your stuff, your selfish stuff? So you ask myself that, and then I think, okay, so maybe I am the problem because I, I definitely do get frustrated and respond hatefully sometimes. And then when that guy tried to tell me how to do my job, I, I definitely got pridefully and said, leave me alone, let me do my job. Um, and so sometimes it's easier to look at the bottom half and say, all right, do I have love? Do I have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Those are seem like simple, easy things, but where am I short on those? Sometimes that, that helps me sometimes a lot more. And then I see that, and then I think about this. In Romans, I am convinced that there is nothing that can separate us from God and God's love. No, death doesn't, life doesn't, angels, demons, none of that. So, or our worries about tomorrow, or not even the powers of hell can separate us from that. Okay, so if I am on that list at the top in Galatians of lustful pleasures, anger, dissension, I don't remember the words exactly. I have them right here. I could look, huh? But if I'm at the top of that list, it's not someone else's fault. I am, okay, I am definitely the problem. I've identified that. So now what do I do? I repent. I choose to repent. and say, I'm sorry, God. And then sometimes that takes us to a place of saying, okay, me and God are good, just me and this guy aren't good. Oh, kind of missing the boat there. Because here we are. If I want to change that other person, don't forget about the other person. Don't worry about his, the speck in his eyes when you got a log in your own. 
How can you think to tell somebody, so think about this, guys. You have this massive log in your eye, and you're telling someone else, hey, you've got a, you've got a speck. It's like when I had a broken leg, and um, I went to somebody and said, like, I had a broken leg and hadn't done anything with it yet, and I told somebody, like, bone sticking out of the, out of the skin, and I told a buddy of mine that, oh, your, um, your shirt's untucked. I mean, why, why do we do that? It's, it's not totally a true story. The bone wasn't sticking out of my leg. Um, so wh- why would we do that? Okay, so, so now let me bring it to my... So clearly, I need to focus on me. I need to approach God in light of his forgiveness through Jesus' love on the cross. And then I can once again earnestly and righteously in his name listen and watch for guidance. And so we often get quickly tossed off this path. We, we, we want to do things right and we get tossed left or right. And, and, we're like, and at the end of the day, we're like, how did I end up there? How in the world did that happen? We don't know. So once again, pray continuously. Always be doing it. This is the part where that really comes in. So we identify, we're screwing this up, we're screwing that up. Or just in general, being close to God all the time. Because if you're going to go to God earnestly and humbly, that alone takes you to prepare yourself. So if you're preparing yourself to be in God's presence all day, because how many times do we think, um, all right, I got to get dressed up to go to church. Okay, what if we dressed our hearts up to go to God? And I don't mean we fix necessarily. We come to God as they are, but because we don't come to God perfectly. We come to him repentantly. So we humble ourselves and we say, God, your ways are greater than mine. So that's how you start a prayer. So if you do that all day, how is that going to change you? Big time. And so we stop praying. We leave the spring. We leave, we leave God's guidance and wisdom because he does pour it into us if we look for it. It's really cool. So now, if we never stop praying, we constantly pray and look for his guidance and expect an answer and humbly, repentantly approach him, we're now his children. His children saying, I want your will above mine. And as we learn his will, it becomes easier and easier and cooler and cooler and cooler. So now we're in a position where we just pray and we listen and we watch what Jesus does. You guys remember those WWJD bracelets a long time ago? Um, So I got one right here, trying to bring them back, but nobody likes me, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna take. But, um, but I think we got it wrong. I think it's watch what Jesus does. Because when you want to sit there and go, what would Jesus do here? No, let's watch what he will do here. Because he is active and he is doing these things. And when we pray, that changes us. And that will eventually, I mean, God doesn't waste a, a soul that is his. You know, that is going to change things around us. But we just worry about God and his work and his work in us. And give ourselves to him and then watch what Jesus does. It is so cool. Just like um, in the book of Daniel, um, I had to think that through because the other day I said, in the book of David, thinking that David had a book written after him, he doesn't. Um, I, I did correct myself quickly, but it was funny. Um, but in the book of Daniel, um, they talk about this story about these four guys, three, three guys, ended up, there were three guys who were, who they, they loved God. They prayed to God. They, they had God in them every moment of every day and were constantly looking for his guidance. So like we get there. So we, we make choices every day. Right? We're on this path, and they're constantly past here, past there, up, down, left, right. We, we don't always know, to go, know what to do, which is why we're praying continuously and listening. Because, because it doesn't always seem clear, which is why we, oh, we take his guidance. We say, God, the answer is yes. Now show me where to go. Um, that's what these guys were like. And they were told to worship this gold statue that, uh, that the king put up every time they blew a horn or something. Worship this gold statue. And they said, no, that's not God. We don't worship things that aren't God. That's an idol. We love God. We're not going to say that he is this weird idol thing um, because he's not. We know who God is. He's real and we know him and that's not him. So there's no way we're going to bow down to that. And he said, well, I'm going to throw you in the furnace then. How do you like that? So now worship him. And they said, no, even if we die, even if we don't make it, we know God. We are on the vine. We know him without a shadow of a doubt. So he's already, he clearly has already changed these guys. Now they have the power to stand up and say no. And he says, throws them in the fire. All right, fine. And so they get thrown in the fire and nothing happens to them. They're standing there fine. And in fact, somebody reminded me of this last night. Um, there's a fourth one there. It's a, there's a fourth being there. And he's like, I saw four in there. And he goes in and pulls them out. And now all of a sudden, the world around them has changed some because they gave their lives to Christ. And they really gave it to him, and they stayed on the vine and stayed with him through the tough stuff. We all go through tough stuff. I don't know how many of you guys have been threatened to be thrown into a fire recently, but um, some of you may have jumped fires when you were younger. Um, not a good idea. Um, but anyways, so 
So these guys gave it to him and then watched what Jesus did. And, and they even said, even if he doesn't, I don't care. I know who he is. What power that has in and of itself. What power that has in your lives and how do you get to know him? You talk to him, he talks to you, you watch him work and then you know he's there. Never fails. It is just so unbelievable. My life is an example. I I get in situations where I'm like, I don't belong here. I should not be doing this. I am not qualified. And it's true in, I mean, almost everything I do. Um, Unqualified doofus. But, but, and then I talk to God about it. I say, God, if if you want this, make it happen. If you don't, or if you want this, I'm going. If you don't, I'm not. Show me. And then when I watch him show up and do amazing things with me that, um, that I know are impossible for me, um, when I watch him change people, it just blows me away. There, there, is your, there is your evidence. There is your personal evidence. And when you have that and somebody threatens to throw you in a fire, you're like, go ahead, I don't care. So what power that is. What amazing power that is that we can all have in our lives every day. So when we're nervous about talking to someone about Jesus, it's like, well, that's stupid to be nervous about that. Hey, you, Jesus is real. Um, do it your way, not mine. Um, say it and mean it. Say it and mean it. If, if you were about to jump off a cliff with someone into water, not like, so like we did when we were kids, we jump off bridges and cliffs into water. And so sometimes you'd get two people up there and they say, okay, I'm going to do it when you do it. Are you going to go? Yeah, I'm going to go. Are you going to go? Okay, let's go at the same time. You want two, three, and you're like, fake it. Because you want to see the other guy go, but you don't want to go. Because you want to make sure he's going to be okay. And that's not what we do. We say, we say, God, the answer is yes. What do you want me to do? How do you, what, what is the question? The answer is yes. And, and we go. Um, I don't have a lot of foresight. Um, and I have to trust God like crazy, and I do, and that just strengthens me so much. It's unbelievable. So say it and mean it. So we're going to come down here. If y'all, a lot of y'all heard the Lord's Prayer. Some of the younger guys, it's not as common now. So a lot of people my age and younger maybe don't have it memorized. So it's not as common to you guys. But when somebody asks Jesus, how do we pray? He said, pray like this. So think about this, guys. When, remember, we are doing an earnest, genuine, repentant prayer. So we say what we mean. So we think about our words. Our words have meaning. Okay? So if I tell Emma to go, never mind. If I tell Emma to go do something at home, she hears it. She says, he means it. He's going to do it. He wants it done. And so when we're talking to God, we should be the same way. So look at these words. Think about these words. And we're going to break it down after we go all the way through it. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins. We've forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. So if we mean this, what a statement of faith this is. And what a statement of of what this means in our hearts. So go to the the first one. We're claiming to be his children. Our Father in heaven. I am your children. I'm your child. I am yours. If I'm his, I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to love him. I'm not going to want somebody else's dad. Like, oh, dad, I don't like what you're saying right now. So I'm going to go spend the night at Frank's house and um, we're going to stay up all night and eat ding-dongs. Um, they're like Twinkies, I think. Um, so we don't do that because he's our father. That's what you want, dad? You got it. You better believe it. I want to be like you. Holy be your name. So we claim to be his children Now, we claim to be the children of a holy God. When we decide we know better, when we do things to hang on to our lives and not give it to our holy God, do we really think, are we really wanting to keep his name holy? When we go say we are children of God and then we accept our sin, are are too lazy to want to do anything about it, or don't want to repent, don't want to humble ourselves, that's really what it comes down to. When we say, our Father in heaven, I am his child, and then we don't want to humble ourselves because do we really think he's holy? May your kingdom 
come. We have a lot of kingdoms in this world. Um, some of us make our houses our kingdoms, our jobs our kingdom. But we want, when we say this, we want God's kingdom to come. And I, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Jesus' kingdom did not look like they thought it was supposed to look like. They thought he was going to come and just wipe out all these people. He didn't do that. He loved them. He showed us his kingdom. So do we want Jesus' kingdom or do we want our kingdom? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is very, very similar. God's will, our will. We go to God wanting something sometimes, wanting our will to be done. Now, are we going to God saying, I want your will to be done, and now listening and expecting and knowing an answer will come? Give us today the food we need. That one made me nervous when I first read it a long time ago. Like, am I just saying, God, give me this? That one made me real nervous when I first read it. I don't know about this one. Not, I don't know about this one. I don't understand. Um, What we're saying there is, God, give me what I need. You say you know what I need. You say you're going to give it to me, and I'm 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 calling it. I'm I'm claiming I want it from you. I don't want it from anywhere else. How we go other places to get what we want all the time. We go to places where we are maybe um, reaching for things that God doesn't want us to reach for. We are maybe ignoring things He wants us to be doing to go get what we want. Maybe I'm ignoring my family to go get back into skydiving or things like that. Going to get things I want. Or are we saying, your will be done, and then listening and watching for him to guide us? Forgive us of our sins. Here we are, repentant. God, I am a sinner. God, I need your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. And I have forgiven those who sin against us. So you've got to mean this one. Sometimes you have to sit for a minute before you say this one. We have forgiven those who sin against us. How many of us are hanging on to something? You know, it, it's, we have no right. We have no right to hang on to it. God has forgiven us so of so much, and we hang on to so little. We have the big, massive log, and we're, we're hanging on to somebody's little tiny speck in their eye. Pretty cool. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So what does that look like? Are we just sitting back and saying, all right, God, you got it. I'm not going to do anything. It's like, God, I don't. This is, I used this example last night. I'll use it again. I, God, I, when I get around alcohol of any type, I go crazy. I can't, I can't do anything but think about it. I, I got to have it. I got to I gotta want it. So don't let me yield to that temptation. So I'm not going to go buy beer. And if I have a favorite bar that I used to go to all the time, I'm not going to go that way home. I'm going to go a different way home. I'm not going to say, all right, God, let's see how you keep me from doing this. You know, we, uh, that's, Jack does that. He, we tell him no, and he says, oh, yeah, how are you going to stop me? I'm going to eat this styrofoam. I'd like to see you stop me do that. Um, we do eventually. It just takes us a while. This poop floats. Um, <laughs> and so... And never mind. So we make we say, God, show me how I cannot yield to this temptation. Show me how to put up walls and barriers and things to protect me, and rescue me from the evil one. We talked about nothing can get between us and God. Well, that I mean, that's true. God rescues us from the evil one. But if we, if we. He loves us enough to let us go over the wall God puts between us. He loves us enough to let us do it because, once again, he wants us a part of it. That means he wants us to have the choices. He wants us to to love him because we want to love him, which is really, really cool. So he rescues us from the evil one, but we have to choose to say, all right, I want to be under your umbrella. I'm going to stay here, Um, which is really cool. So that prayer right there changes things. It changes us. We change ourselves. We don't change ourselves. We, we give ourselves to God and we let him change us, which is just really, really cool. And that prayer, it keeps us on the vine. So we are always listening to him. He is the true grapevine. So he wants to do things with us. He wants to send us places. He created us for a purpose and he wants to send us out on that purpose. Which is, what? Really? All right, cool. But we got to be on the vine with them. And then when we're at work doing, in these places doing these things, if we really want to change the world, we change ourselves and we stay on the vine and then we just watch what he does. 
So prayer really, really does change things. And the most important thing it does is it changes us. It helps us hear him, see him, know that he exists. So, so we pray to be different. We want to be different. Because we often say, make the situation different. But what we should be praying for is, make me different. Change me. So as we go out in our every day, let's pray continuously. Let's pray humbly, gently. Let God move and work in our lives. And that means we look to him, we listen for it, and we expect it. And it'll happen. It is so very cool. So let's pray. God, thank you so, so much. Um, do you love us enough to change us? And, and thank you that you give us your power. And may we not be proud in it, but humbled and thankful just that your power changes us and changes our hearts so that we can be in relationship and, and have you, the almighty God, in our hearts and changing our lives. This week as we go forward, you're mine, or I'm yours. I am yours. And I'm going to run for you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to look for your guidance. And then I'm going to watch what you do because you do not leave me empty-handed. Thank you so much, God. Amen. So guys, we got some really, we got an amazing band up here today. An equally amazing band as both bands. Um, and talking about being different. The song they're about to sing We'll watch a quick intro about it. It's about a guy who went through a similar thing. And it's, God, don't change the stuff around me, but change me. And then, then we can watch what happens around us. Thanks, guys. I wrote the song different a few years ago but I feel like the Lord is teaching it to me in a whole new way right now. A few months ago, we found out that my grandmother has blood cancer. And as hard as it's been to watch her lose her hair as she takes her treatments, her faith has remained intact. A few weeks later, Hurricane Harvey came from my hometown and in two days, poured 44 inches of rain on my house. As we're in the process of replacing flooring and re-leveling our foundation, we keep waiting on things to get back to normal. And then, just a few weeks ago, we found out that my little brother Daniel has stage four colon cancer. After the shock and the tears, my family is preparing to fight by his side as he gets ready to start chemo. And in the midst of all this, the prayer that I kept saying was, Jesus, can you just change these things? Can you stop the cancer? Can you stop the storms? But he's chosen not to stop these things just yet. And I'm finding out that sometimes the best question is not, Jesus, can you change these things around me? But instead, God, can you change me so that I can handle the things that you're walking me through? So I keep singing and praying and believing the words of this song because I know that he is changing me. And that is making all the difference.
come and be different in me. And I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern. And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters. And so I'm giving up everything because I want to be different. I want to be changed till all of me is gone. And all that remains is a fire so bright. The whole world can see there's something different. So come and be different. what you started when they see me let them see you cause I wanna be different I wanna be different I wanna be changed till all of me is gone and all that remains is a fire Oh, oh. 
ocean by the grace of his life. for joining us for service and worshiping with us guys we're going to send you on your way this week with some love and some donuts um heads up we have devotionals uh we have it available on the app so if you guys have access to that app on your phone just go to the resources it's as a pdf just flop through it every morning while you drink your coffee all right guys thanks again have a good week be blessed